Every time I sail by this place, it gets more upscale. Now we got a well, kind of mini mega yacht. Maybe a killer yacht. They seem to be continually building this place. I noticed they've upgraded to a larger ferry that goes out to the island here. So, this looks all private though. I think this is, uh, this belongs to somebody in the, uh, in the triple comma class. It is the 1st of March, 2022. And we have just departed Newfound Harbor. So we're coming up on Bahionda. And, uh, and we got a uh, and we got a nice fair northerly wind here, north northwesterly. And so we're bound for Marathon. So I haven't pulled that anchor up in probably almost 10 days now. I've spent in Newfound Harbor waiting on a fair wind. Uh, for over a week, we've had these moderate to fresh easterlies, basically trade winds, just a, a high pressure anchored in the North Atlantic. Um, a high pressure anchored in the North Atlantic, which has maintained about 15 to 20 knot easterlies for us uh, for over a week. And uh, which is not terrible sailing, but Marathon is due east. So, uh, so that's 20 miles dead up wind. Uh, which is a lot of work uh, if you don't have an engine and uh, you're doing it in a long keel cruising boat. So I decided to just wait. The patient sailor always has a fair wind, right? But uh, sometimes you got to underline that word patient. Uh, so finally, finally we got a fair wind here. So it uh, looks like a nice pleasant sail. I got the self steering in. And uh, the, the wind is gusty, so the self-steering is wandering quite a bit here. Um, uh, but it looks like we should have a nice, uh, we got a beautiful day here, so it looks like it should be a nice, uh, a nice pleasant sail marathon. And this begins the official return. Uh, I am now on my way back to Delaville, Virginia. Wow, so this is quite crowded, even for the outside anchorage. So I'm looking at a spot, so there's a row of boats here and a row of boats there, but it looks like a fair bit of room in between. So drop right off the quarter of the two boats, the innermost boats, that gives you the best shelter. But you have to actually sail in there because uh, your perspective can be deceiving. It can look like a lot of rim, and then once you actually get the boat there, you realize they're much closer together than you thought. So we'll sail in, we're basically on a beam reach. So if it's no good, then we just beam reach right back out and uh, reconsider our options. The only other thing we gotta be wary of is that we have some current that's setting us to leeward here. As you're getting close to the shore, the current gets less, but it's still there. It's about a quarter, half a knot. So I'm going to give her a full main. So I was getting nervous because this current was sweeping me down on this uh, row of anchored boats here. So I want to work to windward a little bit and give myself the mainsail so it'll give me a little more driving power. Alright, well I've had to resort to setting the staysail. So I'm just getting slayed by this current that's setting me to leeward. All right, I'm getting a little better feeling now. I want to pass just right astern of this catamaran. Yeah, we got a better angle on the wind. Got a little more uh, weather gauge, as they used to say. I'm thinking right astern of the, uh, the catch there, the Pearson 365. That looks like a good spot.
So long as the wind is anywhere out of the east. The anchorage outside of Boot Key on the west side is a decent anchorage. Uh, good holding in about 7 to 10 feet of water, though it does present a rather long dinghy ride into the city marina. You can get an anchor pass for about $90 a week at the city marina, which gives you access to showers, laundry, dinghy dock, courtesy bicycles, and they will also receive packages for you. I've overstayed by one day waiting for a package to arrive, and it has arrived. However, the wind has now come southeast, almost south-southeast, so I'm starting to lose my, my shelter behind Boot Key. Right now it's not terribly uncomfortable, but the wave action is going to make lifting the outboard and the dinghy up onto the boat rather more challenging. So I gotta get the noose around the outboard first. Which of course is a bit more difficult with everything goosing around. So I just get everything rigged and try to pick a flat spot as you can and then go for it. Once up on deck, I'll move it to the place I normally store it, which is on its side and just aft of the skylight on top of the cabin. And put a piece of sacrificial timber in there to prevent it from scraping up that nice varnish work. So mission number one accomplished. Now on to mission number two, to get the dinghy up on deck. I don't want to tow the dinghy all the way all the way to Miami, even though I plan to remain in the Hawk Channel. With easterly winds, it's possible there could be enough chop to flip it over. So it's better safe than sorry. All right, now we just gotta lash it down. So done the tough part. See this swell, she's starting to move around here. I'm having trouble just standing on deck without, without having to hold on to something. southeast, almost south-southeast, uh, so I lost my shelter there behind Boot Key. So it wasn't too bad, but it was definitely getting a little, little bouncy um, and a little bit uncomfortable. So we're, we're making really good progress here. We're beam reaching in about 15 to 18 knots of wind out of the southeast. Um, and uh, we got about 20 miles left to go to Rodriguez Key, which is off Key Largo. I've never been there before, but they say it's a decent anchorage and uh, should provide shelter in these southeasterlies. Uh, Rodriguez is good, uh, 
Uh, anywhere, any southerly component wins. Uh, it's, it, it, it looks on the chart like it's a decent anchorage. So, uh, so something new and different and exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, so we got about 20 miles to go and it's noon now, so uh, shouldn't have any trouble making it in before dark. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be anchored down by, uh, by about 5 p.m., 4.35 p.m. So, um, and uh, it's, it's, a little, uh, it's a little bouncy out here uh, because the wind is onshore and even though we're in shallower water, uh, we're still getting some pretty big swells coming in off the, uh, off the Straits of Florida there. And uh, so my mishap this morning was I was trying to get... Uh, trying to get the half and half out of the ice box there and it's the access from the top. Anyway, the egg carton opened up, the eggs fell out and uh, lost about half of them. They cracked and, and so I, I managed to get them out and um, toss them overboard. But of course I still, um, once I get in uh, somewhat quiet there, um, I'm going to have to clean out that ice box because it's now got raw egg on the bottom of it. And the weather forecast is it looks like tomorrow afternoon the winds might just, just about disappear. So I might, uh, if it's decent anchorage, I'll stay at Rodriguez Key tomorrow and then head up to uh, No Name Harbor Biscayne on Friday. Um, the only time constraint is it looks like Saturday. Uh, Saturday into Sunday is another one of these famous winter cold fronts. And even though we got two weeks to spring, they're still coming through. And it uh, looks like that one could be, uh, could be fairly intense. So uh, definitely want to make it back to Biscayne, No Name Harbor. And uh, that should be a, a decent place to weather the passage of the front. Um, so, so that's Saturday, so technically the plan is to stay in Rodriguez Key tomorrow, and then, uh, then it looks like we should have building south to southeast winds on Friday, which will uh, get us to Biscayne, which is about 40 miles from Rodriguez Key. Um, so, uh, so that's the plan. As you can see, we got nice sunny sunny South Florida. The Sunshine State is living up to its, uh, up to its billing. And uh, the other thing I'm enjoying is I'm finally getting some power out of my solar panels. And I think, um, I think I might have, uh, I think the battery is almost charged. It seems to be, uh, the charging voltage is creeping up now, 13.5, 13.6. For a long time, it would just hang around 13.3, 13.4. So I'm hoping that means that pretty soon it's just, just going to uh, it's going to top out, and the charge controller will uh, will shunt it away. And uh, but uh, we'll see. I have not seen that battery fully charged since last August. So I mean that uh, that battery, it's 170 amp hour battery, and it just seems to keep absorbing charge and absorbing charge. So by the light of the late afternoon sun, I find my way into the anchorage behind Rodrigues Key, off Key Largo. It is indeed quite a nice anchorage, very well sheltered with these southeasterly winds. So I'll stay the day Thursday to rest and enjoy the scenery, and then resume on to Key Biscayne on Friday. The weather maps, however, remain implacable insisting on a very strong cold front coming through on Saturday. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it.